Hey everybody, it's Keith with the L1 Automotive Training Channel, and today uh, we're going to actually just swap a chip. So we have a 2012 Fiat 500 with a 8 GMC controller. It is a uh, Magneti Morelli controller. Uh, this particular controller is not supported by, um, by any of the tools that I have, actually, uh, when it comes to just like a full clone. And I know that these are right protected one time rights because they're uh, ST Technologies 95128s. Uh, if I remember, I'll put a uh, superimposed image right here of me taking a picture of my smartphone and blowing it up. That's how I uh, do it. Nothing super special. Um, I am going to literally just swap the EEPROM chips. Now, typically, uh, when you're identifying an EEPROM chip, you're going to utilize, let me see here if I can get a good image. Uh -huh. Focus. There we go. So when you're identifying w what the EEPROM is, there's a couple like generalized rules. There's a thousand uh, exceptions to this rule. But typically, if the module does have an external um, eight leg or five leg EEPROM device, electronically erasable, programmable, read only memory device, like like this looking component here. Um, if it has one, it'll be pretty close to the MCU typically. So this one has a uh, MPC 5565 series MCU and the it does have an external EEPROM. It's not emulated EEPROM. It's not like an emulated sector, like just as a, a graphical representation. Um, not graphical, a, a physical representation here. Sometimes you can imagine these are, are digitally split. Like everything on this half is like your, your P flash, then like your D flash, then like an emulated EEPROM. And that's just, you know, they're not actually physically broken up in there like this. But in this instance where we have this MPC 5565, we do have an external EEPROM. And when you have an external EEPROM, it's typically a unit that's closest to the MCU. Uh, just for when they're designing one and building one out, they're building it out from the MCU outwards. Um, and then from there, it's just the board design of what needs to happen. So in this particular instance, we have a 95128 here, uh, 95128R, sorry, uh, is the controller. And because I know these are one time right protect on the uh, Fiat 500, uh, none of the tools I have here will just extract this data and, and read it. Like you could connect to this and read it. And you could read it multiple times, but it, it would fail to write. So sometimes you can pull it off the board and it will write correctly. But everyone always asks in videos, why didn't you just switch the chips? And so I'm just going to go ahead and do that. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually switch the chip from this one um, to our donor board here. Um, I've pulled them apart. Next, you guys will be asking to show, me how, show you guys how to take them apart. Um, yeah, I, I might do that at a later date. So let's go ahead, um, excuse the housekeeping of moving of components here. I gotta kind of move this thing into the way here. Um, I'll, I'll flip you guys over to the, to the microscope here shortly. So I just gotta, I gotta find myself on here. I apologize. I know you guys are like just looking at me moving around. Um, so here, let me let me flip it over uh, here. Okay. So this is this is uh, what we see here. That's the that's the chip there. Um, if I had a different light, you would be able to actually read read the chip there. So what I'm going to do is attempt to not move the board. We're going to put a little Amtec. Paste flux. Uh, realistically, it's better to use the paste flux to put the units on um, because it's tacky kind of and it holds holds them in place. So we're just going to use some hot air here. Give me a second for the hot air to warm up. Um, and then where are my there's my my tweezers. So. We're just going to apply some hot air directly to it.
Now we took that picture earlier and that's going to help us uh, keep the uh, orientation of this chip because uh, that's important. And when we lift this chip off, we don't want to hit any of the other uh, components around it. So we're just uh, going to get it nice and warm. And then we're just going to grab it and move it off there. And that easy. We, we pulled it off the board. We set it to the side. Um, I don't know if you can really see. Um, let me move this camera and see if you can. All right, so I just moved it directly off of the board right here and set it right there. And this thing is a little bitty, uh, as you can see. Yeah, I got big old steak fingers, but uh, it's still a rather small component. So we're going to set that. Uh, this is the original component. This is the OG. Um, we're going to go ahead. I'm going to place it on top of the MCU. Uh, if I can get it to stay. Oh, excuse my cellular device. Okay, so I set that there. I'm going to go ahead and move this just out of the way, and we're going to bring the daughter board over or daughter board, the donor board. All right, so we're gonna bring the donor board over. Um, I'm kind of just lining it up on the microscope, I apologize. Hey, on this one, you, um, let me see, yeah. All right, hold on, silence the cell phone. Quiet in the theater, y'all. going to shut that off okay so in this one you can see it's a 95 128 uh, this is a, this one's a W um, so what we're gonna do ooh, these may not even be compatible I don't know anyways uh, I didn't supply the parts so I was just told what to do so we're gonna boot them up afterwards and see if the vent and everything's changed over so we're gonna go bloop, bloop. we're just putting some liquid flux on there um, I'll use that this time to show you Same thing, we're gonna take some hot air. We're gonna go with some hot air. Uh, the very super inexpensive hot air gun I'm using, as well as uh, all the tools that I'm using, I'll put in the description. Just heating it up, just heating it up. Kinda watching the solder. Pick it up. Ah! Oh, goodness. Hold on. Okay, that is much harder to look at that in the, uh, in the microscope and do that job. If you're wondering what I'm sitting here fighting. Put this over there. Hey, stay. Easy. All right. Pull that part off. I am now going to consult my cellular device. Hey, there's a picture of Liz. Uh, go back and look at my pictures. Okay, so I'm going to take this... Uh, OG here and since I have the the EEPROM over on my bench just kind of across the bench I'm going to grab my tweezers set this component here moving it all around like crazy don't worry so this is a good spot for the paste flux because this is gonna help keep the chip in place uh, there was there was just the right amount of solder on the board and stuff. I'm not going to add any solder to this or take any away. Oh, moving this. So, give me a second here to get this oriented where I want it. It is it is physically lifted off 
Like you can see it looks like it's correct from, from the microscope angle, but when you look at it from here, you can probably see it's physically up in the air. That's okay, it's like sitting on top of that, because I'm gonna show you what happens. So when we take this, go to our microscope view. Ah, I'll move my, okay, now I'm messing stuff up. Hold on, I'm hitting things and moving stuff around. You guys can excuse that. I'm just going to add some heat here. Oh, oh, she moved. She moved. Where are we at? There we go. Add that back to there. We're just going to add heat to it until we get the desired effect that we want out of it. I don't know if you saw that, but she about set right where I wanted her to. Needs to move a hair that way. A hair that way. Hold it. Almost done. Okay, I like it. I like where she sets. Now, the thing to keep in mind is that I put no pressure on lifting it off the board. That if you have to pry it off, you're going to rip a pad, pull a trace. Big no-no. So, um, what we want is it to just, just literally lift off. And then, like, you guys saw it, how it happened. We just lifted it off, set it down, and we put this one on. Now, I'm going to go ahead and check um, orientation here. And make sure that I didn't move this mamma jamma around while I was doing that. So... Here's what I do. I use my cellular device. Make sure the lens is clean. I take it and I zoom. Enhance. Enhance. Okay, so they're upside down facing towards that. Okay, then I go back and I look at my picture on my device of the one that I took. Which is that one. Ah, a little flippage. We'll see that the letters line up with the with towards the bottom. I did it right, okay? That's what I'm saying. I'm sorry. It's hard to show you without I gotta have like nine cameras. Cause I got this camera and then we got this camera and then I moved it, but we got this one right here. So um, I'm sorry. It's 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 difficult. So, um, that's all, all done. Um, what we will do now is I will pin out powers and grounds and talk to this and make sure the VIN's correct for the car that we're trying to go in. And if, if it's correct and it reads and it talks, I can assume all the rest of the board's good. I also have to clean up all this flux and stuff. So I'm just going to use rubbing alcohol and a toothbrush and uh, a soft bristle toothbrush. Use rubbing alcohol, clean it all off, and then... Um, use probably some heat to dry it turn off the hot air station over here and that's it so that's how i would lift a chip and it's uh so here's what i would recommend for you to do if you're going to get into doing this and moving chips around and you're going to do any of that work um, you need to go get a bunch of modules from the junkyard and practice um, it does not take a lot of money yeah this microscope is kind of expensive um the, the <laughs> This is like $50 of Amatec Flux, and the hot air station I just used was like $38 on Amazon. Um, there's a bunch of stuff in it. So go check out like Lewis Rossman, uh, Rossman Repair Group. He does a lot of like iPhone Mac repairs and stuff. 
Um, I buy, um, I used to buy Amatec from him, but now that Amatec company is kind of um, moved, there's two companies called Amatec. Both of them make good flux. Most stuff you buy on the internet is junk. Um, it's just like Vaseline rebottled. It's ridiculous. Um, anyways, watch Lewis Rossman, learn some stuff from him. Uh, these tweezers were, you know, they came with like a solder sucker kit. I mean, like legitimately, I think if you didn't use this and you, I got this liquid uh, flux stuff from a local electronics store. I have a place called Affiliated Electronics uh, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. You can call them and they will mail you stuff. I get this, the, the label's worn off now, but it was GQ Electronics uh, liquid flux. Um, so I, I use a lot of liquid flux. Um, this Amatec I buy in the smaller tubes now. Um, I don't know where, I, I don't think I have some here in my office. It's probably out in the shop. And then like, if I was going to read this device, I could use like the Mini Pro, which is sub $100. So it's not like all the tools require a bunch. It's just a bunch of practice. So um, for sure, 100% work on, on just getting some modules from the junkyard and practicing. Uh, you'll find that getting them open may be like the most challenging part. And so, so that's just a lot of practice and, and stuff. And it's just, it's a pain in the butt. So don't forget, like, subscribe, comment, all that stuff. If you like these kinds of videos, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll make more of them. Thanks guys. We'll see you next time.